right you guys so yuki you here once again gonna talk about dawn of war 3 and its state as it was released it has finally been released and just these are my final thoughts after having played it for a while and the overall impression i think i have of the game is that it's good teetering on mediocre like it's on mediocre slightly above mediocre mostly because you pay sixty dollars for what's basically just a multiplayer game and not one with much content the campaign is atrociously bad like it is actually hilariously terrible they could not even be asked to animate the character portraits like even in dawn of war 2 character portraits would at least like talk man it was like a gift they would move the same frames like for a, in a 10 second loop but at least they moved here the only thing you've got are some cutesy cinematics and to be fair the artwork in those cinematics actually looks pretty good but that's basically all you get there's only about five or six of these in the game the rest is just voice acting which i guess kind of does the job i don't like gabriel angelos's new voice actor nor do i like gore guts's voice actor so that's uh two out of the three main characters that i don't like so i'm wondering that goes maka did a good job i think the eldar did in general a good job and speaking of the voice acting it's actually at first i didn't like it too much but now after hearing some lines i kind of do like it i like the announcers i think the orcs are the best race they got which is like usual that's what happens I like the Eldar second best, and the Space Marines are okay. Not as good as they were in Dawn of War 2, but I guess it's hard to beat Dawn of War 2. The, the other problem is that the game, like I said, doesn't really have much content. It's basically multiplayer, and multiplayer kind of plays out same old, same old. Especially since there's now a meta forming, and the meta, I don't know, it's not particularly very... So you kind of just see the people spamming the same shit over and over again. So the game is actually kind of dull from that point of view. But the game does have potential. I actually like the concept behind it. Like in, if there were no balances used and stuff, I'd say the game is actually pretty good. The core gameplay is fun. I do enjoy the dynamic between the different units. My biggest concern with the core gameplay, and this is something that I just flat out don't like, is the over-importance of elites. Basically, everything is mandated by elites. Several elites can cleanse all infantry armies completely by themselves. And even rape some, some vehicles. Speaking about the Autarch, for example, who is actually obscenely strong. He's like a Maka 2.5, just a much better version of Maka, I guess, just flat out AoEs everywhere, just blowing everything the hell up, and he still can do anti-vehicle damage, because he can actually pull vehicles to himself, which almost guarantees their death every time, he actually does true damage with his sword, so that's just more anti-vehicles, so the guy is actually pretty tough, but it, the thing is that I don't really enjoy it all that much, just being about elites, I like the units and the unit control a lot better. I know I, I would like the elites a bit more if they were less overwhelming, but I guess there's really not much you can do about that. Some elites, I guess, are I think are better designed than others, but it is I guess it is what it is. Some abilities and some doctrines are pretty stupid. Uh, there's a one that's flat out broken right now that Relic has yet to fix. They did fix a stacking issue with it, but they failed to fix the actual biggest issue, which is that the Doctrine, if it's equipped on the Commander, it makes Webway Gates teleport back with a 10 second cooldown or something. Just a really short cooldown, which makes Webway Gates impossible to kill because they regenerate as well. And on top of everything else, the it basically makes the Eldar have fleet of foot everywhere, and Eldar were clearly not balanced with that in mind. Fleet of foot everywhere just makes Eldar pretty much unstoppable. There's also a few questionable decisions in a few other unit designs. I'm not sure why they lowballed tactical marines as bad as they did. 
Tax should probably trade a bit better with the opposing shooting units. The difference in price. So what you have is basically Eldar attack moving. Oh, but the other problem, of course, is that they added all about a whole bunch of doctrines for the Dire Avengers that makes them super OP. So basically, the Eldar against Space Marines can make Dire Avengers and attack move across the map unless the Space Marine spams scouts and assaults. And even then, you can't really fight the Eldar because the Dire Avengers just completely destroy Assault Marines. Even with their leap, Dire Avengers are more cost-effective than they are. So that's a thing. But overall, I guess I would say I have enjoyed my time with the game. It's, it's pretty enjoyable. Hopefully, once they get a few things fixed, it'll be on its way. Unfortunately, I have to express some concern over the low population the game currently has it, it's dropped massively and the population is pretty low i guess i suppose many it would make sense considering it's an rts and rts's are not usually all that popular but even so the player base isn't actually that big i've had to wait quite a while now for some 3v3 matches and 2v2 matches as well so it seems the only place where you get good cues is 1v1 but 1v1 all the time can get kind of dull but I guess there's really not much you can do about that. So, yeah, overall, I would say the game is pretty enjoyable. If you can get it on sale and you have an interest in RTS games, I would definitely recommend this one. Hopefully they tweak the elites. From what I've seen, most people, a lot of people do have their reservations about the elites because the game really does revolve a lot around them. Your opponent has to make a pretty bad plays in order to not cause a lot of death and destruction with their elite so you sort of play really scared with your units so, and when you don't have an elite and he does and some elites are stronger than others most people point their fingers at the striking scorpions which are pretty op i mean i, I don't know if they're truthfully 100 percent op but they're definitely very powerful you can't really deny that but Besides those few small issues, the game really does have a lot of potential, and it's on Relic to fix their shit and make the game as best as it can be, and make it fast, because like I said, the population is dwindling, and that's not really very particularly healthy. I mean, if you just want to play 1v1 forever, then I guess it doesn't matter, right? Like, even 5,000 people or 3,000 people online at the same time seems like a lot when you only need one other person to play. But well, if you have an expectation for something bigger, those big battles where you can get a chance to use the big elites, watch mass, gigantic just battles where you know, just fucking death and destruction everywhere, then you're not necessarily going to get that experience from a 1v1. Since you're constantly trading units thanks to the power of some elites, and sometimes it's really hard to just keep units alive, especially as Orc, where you've got abilities that basically bring your boys to like one member if the ability hits. I mean, your units are pretty, pretty flimsy when compared to certain abilities. So you might not necessarily get very gigantic armies in 1v1. Certainly not the same way you would see it in 3v3. And even then, they sort of evaporate very quickly. So I don't know about that, but yeah. So those are basically all my, uh, my impressions. I do hope Relic well, like, does get to work on new factions because, like I said, the game does lack content. The community can technically make maps, but we haven't seen any of these go into rotation in quick match, so if you want to play those, you have to go to a custom match. Yeah, there are a few other things I don't like with the uh, base game, which is the idea that you have to grind for doctrines and, and the like, but thankfully someone made a custom map, which is for grinding. So I guess in the grand scheme of things, it's not that big a deal, but locking crap in a competitive game mode behind grinding is just a, a stupid move it's just flat out dumb so from that point of view i guess my general rating of the game would be like you know like uh if i had to say out of 10 i guess a six would work because it's like not terrible it's not truly mediocre it has good things but it does also has a whole bunch of things that hold it back but like i said these things can be fixed if relic just put some effort into it and try their best and add a new faction and I hope they add the new factions in a very quick manner. I don't want to pay, I honest to God don't want to pay $40, $50, 
for an expansion pack that just adds one or two races and it gives me a single player campaign that I'm honestly not going to play. I don't care about single player, I just want to play different races in multiplayer. I honest to God would appreciate like a separate multiplayer package for the factions that is much lower cost than the entirety of the expansion. I honest to God just do not care. Like, I just flat out do not give even one fuck about single player. Because from what I can tell, Relic just, I mean, I don't know, maybe they can up their game. Maybe they can up their game and it'll actually be amazing. The new expansions since, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I dread using Dawn of War 2 as a comparison because this game is clearly not a... And the people who were in charge of that game's multiplayer clearly had very little to do with this one. I mean, the single player. So, yeah, I guess definitely not excited for for single player on that note. So, yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Wait for a sale. You know, if you're interested, give it a shot. And, yeah, that's about it. So, I hope you enjoy the rest of this uh, little 1v1 match I did have against an orc. Uh, I did try using tactical marines. People do say tactical marines are kind of bad, and they do underperform a bit. But I decided to give it my all in this game. I also avoided using elites just to see how, for the majority of the game, just to see how well I could perform. The orc player at this point doesn't seem to be playing the meta, so that might be why he's not really using trucks and the like so it's kind of just depending on it was it looks like he was just depending on just attack moving with his sluggers and sort of hoping for the best he never managed to recover and he did lose all three squads at the beginning definitely a problem from what i've found uh if you have any problems with space marines against melee and you don't want to waste power on flamethrowers you can just mass scouts make a scout legion and scouts will just laugh at most melee units since you can just chain stun them for basically forever you just and you can get cluster mines which do deal a lot of damage and i think that will make itself evident soon but yeah enjoy the rest of the match you guys and yeah those are just all my thoughts on dawn of war 3. Machine Forge at the ready. Bolter Devastators are ready to drop at your command. Infantry durability upgrade in progress. Deployed. Orbital drop underway. Oh, Google 
Squad deployed. Damage upgrade. No mercy for all. Upgrading stronghold to tier a drop pod is available. A new drop pod bay is online. Wouldst thou cast the holy standard? Green skin scum. Dreadnought, readying for drop. Point captured. May this fuel our victory.
Tactical Marines readying for drop. Completed a requisition generator. Upgrading infantry health. Our elite battle brothers are ready to deploy at your word. Tactical Marines are in position to commence deep strike. Heavy ball to devastate. We've taken a resource point. Infantry damage. Secured. Returning Walker to full function. For these battles, we are sworn to service. Power generator is ready. We've completed an elite point generator. A drop pod is available. Our holy standard is cast. Orbital batteries ready to fire. We've completed a power generator. A requisition generator is ready. Our elite battle brothers are ready to deploy at your word. Tactical marines are in position to commence deep strike. Deployed. 